Hey everyone, it's Calvin, also known as Omer, and this is Ace Attorney Chronicles. This is my first art playthrough of Days Attorney Chronicles Adventures. And the evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. I cannot believe this is uh, happening, but then again, like, I think one of the things that Ace Attorney is always very good at is throwing a curveball at you and expecting you to just, like, catch it right away. Catch it every single time. And we always fumble a little bit, but we do catch it. We do catch the curveball. I kind of expected this. I think this was kind of like a expected twist, but I do like the way they did this with the actual uh, corrections. It's really cool. That's right. You hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina, the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. It would appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of the Novovich Ballet's prima ballerina. Miss Nikolina Pavlova. <laughs> so we know this for sure. Can you, like, oh my god. That is extremely dangerous. Thank god you have a big hat. Oh my god, here we go. And also, like, j this, is a, this is a teenage girl, like, who's able to pull this off. Really awesome design. The hook in the hair. You're right. My real name is Nina. I mean, Nikolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. Man, that's so cool, right? That's such a really great way of doing this that, like, sets it apart from the other Ace Attorney games as well. Wrongdoing. Topic 2 conclusion. Are we still going? Now, as for my second conclusion... You are at this very moment on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. Why do I always yawn in every Let's Play? It's like, I'm worried. <laughs> and the proof of this crime? Over there. Animations are on point. Oh yes, Miss Pavlova. Taken unawares, people have done a prospend a prospensity to let the ease eyes stray, you see. Also, the, the, the box, isn't it? And I assure you, the eye speaks so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that's a traveling case. This woman is the ballerina, and she's right in front of our eyes. So clearly she can't be inside that traveling case as well. No, that's right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? I can see I'm going to have to step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. You seem to look pleased, Naruto-san. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Sholmes? Stop it! Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. So there's something else that shows what this woman is up to in terms of... Oh, look at this! The tiaru. Look at this, let's talk about this. Wow, look at this dazzling tiara. i never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, Naruto-san, try it on. I would totally try it on in a situation like this. What, me? Isn't it usually girls who wear tiaras? Wouldn't you like to try it on? I mean, like, a tiara is a tiara, you know what I mean? It's like a crown, but a fancy crown. Wear it. Oh no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does this tiara look familiar? Is it the one from the paper? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. The one that had all the rubles. It was worth like lots of rubles. Yes. This then? She stole the tiara. The proof of your crime is surely this tiara. Ah. I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in the Novich, uh, Novavich Ballet, is it not? Indeed. It would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary, the crime you've committed is theft. Oh no. Yes, you left your ballet troupe unlawfully taking their precious tiara with you. 
She did a big egg, a big egg. I have no one, no family, no friends. I'm all alone and I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from, uh, how do you say? An Earl of Prussia? It belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old and she's run away all by herself. Here's the freaking thing. I gotta say this right now and I don't like, like as a person who teaches 15 year old girls, like to be on your own in any situation, especially like a runaway in any situation is so freaking dangerous. Can you imagine? It's dangerous now. Can you imagine how dangerous it was back then when there was no real quick way of getting a hold of someone if you were in trouble? Like, it is so dangerous. Um, and like, they are like, and we don't talk about it enough. Like, because, you know, every time the topic of vulnerability when it comes to even like, the, the, the most like, privileged of women, is usually like, like, brushed onto the carpet because it's usually like a thing of like, Oh, like, you know, like, you're just like, you know, SJW, but like, man, a 15-year-old girl run away all by herself. That is a lot. That is a lot for a 15-year-old boy. That's a lot for a 15-year-old person in general. That would be a lot for me. I'm 28, and if I ran away with nothing to my name, I'd probably survive pretty okay. But, like, it would still be hard. This is, this is crazy. She must become extremely lonely. Lonely is not the problem. Lonely's <laughs> not the freaking problem here! Alright, I will tell you everything. There is no point to hiding it now. Come, come, let us not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? What do you mean? True. You've astonished and refused to open this traveling case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish, to remain, uh, wish for it to remain, remain closed. <laughs> is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um... My dear girl, there's no sense in playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case even before I've ever laid eyes on them. <laughs> dear me. We are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup du wall betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. The books! Yes, the reason why you refuse to open up your case is written on the books in the shelf. Is there a snake in the case? He's completely changed tack with his deduction now. I think Mr. Jones is adapting his logic to changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe, but why has he suddenly brought up the bookshelf into all of this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case would have been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true, but still. Miss Pavlova certainly did not ca did cast her eyes in that direction. I noticed it myself. There has to be another reason why she won't open her case, and it must be somewhere in the same area, if that's where her gaze was invo involuntarily drawn. I agree, that's the only answer. Whatever she has hidden inside that case should be revealed by the following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. Following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase? What do you mean? What has caught her gaze? <gasps> Rules of passage. <gasps> a small picture of this. What is this picture? This is a charming picture, isn't it? What is it? Someone climbing a steep mountainside? Or descending one, it seems to me. When you've been on the flat sea for a while, maybe you start seeing hills and mountains and everything. Ah, it looks like these are all the same books that we have in our cabin. I suppose the steward likes to make sure passengers have plenty to read for a long voyage. And have you noticed how all the books have fallen over just like cosmos son's cabin? It's almost like someone's taking a sweep with them. Maybe Miss Pavlova while she was practicing her ballet? Anyway, the point is, we don't have time to look through all these books at the moment. We couldn't even want to. They're all in Russian. Well, that's a relief. Let's try our look elsewhere. Well, is she looking at this? These are the rules of passage for travel aboard this SS Br Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. There it is. Pets are also strictly forbidden. That's what she's looking at. There's a snake in there. The speckled band. It was exactly the same notice in our cabin, too. 
I wonder what happens if you break the rules. Oh dear, I'm sure the punishment would be severe, Naruto-san. You'd probably uh, to be left adrift in the freezing cold ocean. Or shut inside a tidy wardrobe for days on end. So I've actually been serving time for weeks now. Have I? So it's this. Yes. Yeah, she's hiding the speckled band. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case was written in the rules of passage. So she has an animal. Passengers must keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I... As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time to time, but no weapons or other dangerous items would move it, it, its, its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlo. Inside your traveling case. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Is the last item listed forbidden vessel rules of passage? A pet. Oh wow, she's getting damaged by this. Emotional damage, you might say. Possession of a prohibited animal. Solved. So clearly, you aren't the, who you said you were. No, I'm not Grinzy Roylat. My real name is Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Later the same night, you stole aboard the storeboard of this vessel. Which couldn't have been easy. The Buddha is a huge steamship with a vast crew. Could she really have snuck on board without being noticed? In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman. Can I just say this right now? This game's fucking fantastic. <laughs> it's so good. And like, it, like the animations, the colors, uh, the music, the characters, everything just makes every moment in this game very interesting. And this chapter to me, so far, is like even miles better than the first one. Like, miles better. Um, like, it's almost as if like, you know, I really feel like the investigations, like I said, play such an important pivotal part in these games that you kind of need them to be at the start if you really want to have uh, like a really great introduction to these games. In my opinion, anyway, you have like, it's always should be like short trial and then, uh, you know, you go into like investigation. And I don't know, I, I've, 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 I've loved this so far. I've, I'm in love with this. And you need to sever all things with your past by severing your long hair. If she cut her hair, I'd be so upset. Yet to a woman, hair is no trifling matter, especially at this time, by the way. Um, like, and, and not just this time, I think it is to a, a lot of women still now, but I'm saying, like, in terms of the wider sphere of, like, hair, right? Long hair was, like, what you gotta have if you wanna be pretty. Nowadays, it's like, hey, I, like, you can have any haircut you really want, and there's so many stylish little haircuts. But, like, even, like, I remember, like, uh, there's stories, you'll hear, like, diary entries from people from, like, um like Victorian eras or like even like even like after being like oh I cut my hair or like uh, my hair is falling out I will no longer be able to live <laughs> you know what I mean and like that's just like how things were how things really were and like not that I take my hair pretty seriously now too my personal recommendations leave well alone so if that was just you about to cut off your own hair who was it that let out the scream we heard outside the cabin that veritable tinkling of a bell? Why none other than this young lady, naturally. More like a full set of pipes, if you ask me. I was so scared when I ran away, ran away in Shanghai. And I was sure they would come looking for me. That's why I decided to... How do you say? Disgust myself? So no one would recognize me. As a result, you transformed yourself into that questionable old man? Great design. I put on the fur hat and fake beards. Then just before you came in here, I saw the new in the newspaper. Right on the page, there was a picture of me. 
I was so frightened, I couldn't stop from screaming. I knew that if I didn't change my appearance completely, they would find me. So I decided to cut all my hair as fastly as possible. I picked up the scissors in my hand and... At that precise moment, we walked in through the annoyingly unlocked cabin door. Man, it's so good! Things happen like that sometimes, don't they? Things do indeed happen like that from time to time. Are those two even talking about the same thing? There's just one more thing I'd like to know. What exactly do you have inside your traveling case? You are right. It is my dearest friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. Please, don't tell anyone. If the captain finds out, if you say to any of the crew... Your secret is safe with us, I assure you. But in return... You must tell us, in as much detail as you can muster, about the events of last night. Yes, all right. I will tell you. Well, Mr. Naruto? Wasn't it something Mr. Shomo's great deduction? It was certainly something. We fixed every single aspect of it. I'm just not entirely sure what, but at least Miss Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Indeed, it is incredible. Ah, and one more thing. Oh yes, what? Observe your wrists. My... Oh, we're back. Handcuffed. Ah! Your hands are cuffed again. But, but, but how? True to my word, I've restored your shackles. When and why? There's still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mr. Naruto. I'm sorry to say, it can't be helped at the moment. Ha! <laughs> Can't it? Really? Anyway, let's listen to what Mr. Miss Pavlov has to say. I can't go on not knowing. I have to find out what the speckled band that Cosmos Sam wrote about as I really was is the snake. It is the snake. So, I guess we just converse with her now. What happened last night? Running away and friends. So, we have a whole new discussion point uh, with this uh, lady now. Which is perfect. It's perfect for us. Like, I guess, like, we just do from the start. Did you notice someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen saw me this morning. When I was eating breakfast, the man the man who died, he was a friend of mine. Oh. That's why we're trying to find out what happened. Do you Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you heard a strange noise, for example? Perhaps people talking? Perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest? Perhaps the steam engine exploded? Perhaps everyone on board would have noticed if that had happened. Yeah, true. Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. I'm sorry, but all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they would find me. I didn't notice anything that happened around me. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. <laughs> Running away. Okay. I'm actually very curious about this character. I, like, they've done a, such a good job of making every character like so interesting. You're running from your ballet company, haven't you? The Novovich uh, Ballet? Yes. I'm traveling to Great Britain, and from there... I want to go to America. I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. You wish to forget? A challenging proposition. When you have that striking tiara as a reminder... But the tiara is mine! I need to live! I have no money of my own. The Novovich Ballet gives us only a little food and water, and we must dance all over the world. I had to run away, I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. So you ran away to protect yourself? 
Yes, and the crew of the ship. They've all been kind to me. They let me come on board, and they said I could hide in this cabin. If that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova, it creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yes, it does. What do you think about it, Mr. Naruto? I think we should hear Miss Pavlova's explanation. To what conundrum, I'm not sure, but... I don't think so far she's very, like, I'm kind of, like, on her side. I love her. I love so anyone who's, like, you know, like, running away in a sense. Does that make sense? Like, it's, like, like it's kind of cool. <laughs> and also, like, you know, we, like, at this point, she is probably, like, terrified. So, like, we should probably, like, hear her out. Conundrum. Miss Pavlova, allow me to pose you a riddle. According to the newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from the ballet. Now, that being the case, it must have been last night that you boarded this vessel. However, the SS Bura stopped by no port last night. That's it, of course. So how is it, pray, that you come to be aboard? Now that I think about it, the crewman outside the cabin acted very strange when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about when uh, the occupant of this cabin came aboard. He said that is not your business, by the way. That is not your business. Yes, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something. An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. Sorry, what was that? It is how the Russian newspapers describe one of my performances. And that is how I came here too. I descended from the heavens because I am an angel. Okay, girl, you believe in yourself. You believe in yourself. Considering English isn't your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. I mean, when people are talking about you all the time like that, like you're going to probably realize, you know, I'd be able to say it over and over again. Um, like, the most foreign languages I kind of deal with on a day-to-day -day basis of people who, like, speak kind of broken English are Ukrainian and Spanish. But, like, a lot of Spanish people have, like, very, very good English. Uh, it's very, very good. Uh, and, like, the Ukrainian kids we work with are getting better and better every day. A genius descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to, direct to detection. Words once said about myself. A quote from a wonderfully extravagant advertisement for the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, in fact. Yes, Mr. Showy. Uh, Mr. Mr. Showy, sorry. Anyway, it doesn't look like Miss Pavlova's going to tell us what really happened. You know what? That's her prerogative. So the friend you mentioned is inside your traveling case, is that right? I don't think animals are allowed on board, according to the rules of the passage. You're going to snitch, Suzato? You're going to be a big snitch, huh? You're going to tell? Oh, Mr. 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 Security, there's a snake on board. Snitches end up in ditches, Suzato. You remember that. Oh, please, don't tell. Don't tell any of the crew. I would never do that. I'm not a snitch. If they found my precious... Then the burly Russians would be steal themselves in unison to throw you and your case overboard, no doubt. Ah! So reassuring, Mr. Sholmes. But what sort of pet is your friend? A little puppy? Is it, isn't it? Maybe an adorable little rabbit? It's a snake! Ha, you credit our Russia as a land with small rabbits, do you? Oh, don't they have small rabbits there? there? You may as well ask. I have no idea. <laughs> huh. You two are miserable bunglers when it comes to understanding the nature of young ballerina's friends. Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken! Sholmes. You've done it again, my friend. Really? Consider the benefits. A rousing wake-up call, daily fresh eggs, and when adversity strikes, it could satisfy the needs of sustenance. So you'd eat your friends? I'll remember that. 
Well, it would appear this friend's identity is a closely guarded secret not to be revealed. <laughs> she obviously doesn't quite trust us yet. There's something I should like to show her, I think. Maybe she might be able to shed some light on it. Oh, we could show her some of the core record. Guys, this is such an incredible game. Like, holy hell, the turnaround this game had for me. Because I was entered, le left the first try thinking, eh, this is alright. This is great. Like, this, the, the conversations are interesting. The characters keep everything flowing. It's so good. It's really fantastic. So, to show her something to spark her memory? Is that it? Is it this? Do we have to show her this? Oh, we have to present something. I remember we have to present something like this. Um, but what do we present to her? This? What would you say? This is the diary of my friend who passed away. His diary? Yes, and he wrote last night before he died, seeing something a little unusual. It reads, 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. And then a few minutes later, 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? I don't understand. It's strange, isn't it? But the ventilator he mentions joins this cabin, you see. It's up there on the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connected together. Oh! Miss Pavlova, has something occurred to you? Does the speckled pattern the victim mentioned mean something to you? This is what I was thinking, yeah, because I, I think it's the snake. No. I don't know anything. Um... The voice I'm doing for her, and I hope, like, a lot of people, you know, are kind of, like, okay with it. Uh, it's, like, a mixture of, like, Bjork and, like, some of, like, the Russian and, sorry, the Uk Ukrainian kids in my school. Like, because uh, they all have, like, these really amazing accents. Because, like, that's one of the things that, like, I feel like, you know, a lot of times, like, accents are kind of, like, parodied to, to a certain point. But, like, to me, it's, like, so great to, like, be in a classroom. Like, and it, I remember in a class the other day... Like, we had a German girl, a Danish girl, a Spanish girl, an Italian girl, and a Ukrainian girl all in the same class. That was literally the whole class. It was just those, like, five girls. Uh, and, like, having them all talk to you, like, and, like, you know, having the sounds bounce off everywhere. It's like, oh, my God. Like, like this is like, look, we're, look at, we're so different. And then you, like, realize all the similarities between yourself as well. And it's, like, a really cool thing. And, like, I think that's something that we should be celebrated more in media, maybe, is, like, the idea of different accents. Because I feel like it's too long, too many times it's like, oh, I am doing a uh, Colombian accent. And it's like, man, you know that people from Colombia don't sound like that. And second of all, like, it's, it's, if you're from Colombia, you're, you, you sound pretty freaking great as well. You get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to say, be, like, a stickler for it. I'm just saying that it's really cool, like, how different we all sound. I don't know. I think it's cool. I think it's cool, okay? Oh. Oh no, it's Big Boy McGrew. Excuse me, Mr. Roland. Oh, yes, what? <laughs> now we can do this to voice. Wow, she's fast. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain's quarters at once, please. What? I will come now. What? You must leave now. Oh, no, it's fine. Don't mind us. Yes, please don't worry. About, uh, worry about yourself, Mr. Rolat. Get out! The passenger said out! Or do you want me to throw you out? Uh, it looks like we'll be have to investigate in this uh, cabin until later. What a pity. And so we lost our chance. Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin, we were unceremoniously chased out. That is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. To be continued! Whoa! We got to a to be continued screen. Very strange. Very rare for like that, that to happen at this point in the game. I guess like we're going into like a different section, a different chapter. Save your current progress. I will. I will for sure save our current progress.
9th of January. It says, Bura! First class cabin passageway. I wish I had been thrown out like that. I wish we managed to find some clues as to what the speckled band might be. It's a snake. We didn't manage to investigate at all. And I imagine... That we won't be able to for a while longer. We'll never get past that sailor guarding the door. He's clearly glaring at us. I have to say, don't even think about it. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? Well, what happened to our great detective friend? Is he still in there? Oh, yes. He's completely disappeared. When did he do that? We still need to get these off. He slipped away as quietly as the wind, but not before ensuring these were securely back on my wrists. So... I don't know if we should try maybe go to... We can't go to Miss Plazova's cabin. We get the first cabin passageway, Cosmo's cabin. Should we leave here right now, or should, is there someone like we can like converse with? Can we converse with you right now? I really wish we'd get a chance to look around Miss Plazova's cabin. What? Why you look like that? You want something? Mm. Maybe you want me to throw you out again? No, no, definitely not that. Next time I have to throw you out, i show you where the lobsters spend winter. Understand? I uh, understand. I love how he just like said one word. Maybe I should steer clear of him until he's forgotten my face. So we should probably go back into the cabin? I don't think he'll forget your face now, Rudo san It was actually kind of a very funny, you know, thing that like, uh, you know, I remember when I was buying, uh, when, uh, when I was a teenager and we tried to buy, uh, drink underage. I looked a lot, uh, at the t you know what's so funny? I look a lot younger now. Than I I am, but when I was a teenager, I was only like a really grow a beard. Uh, so like basically, what would happen is I would have I would go into the store and buy some alcohol, and it would be like, oh, so it is this is a new thing, and it would be fine, right? It would be fine. I go into the store, buy some alcohol, and then like I know it's alcohol by the way. I'm just saying alcohol, uh, and like I would buy it for my friends as well. I'm admitting to a crime here. Who cares? Yeah, crimes do crimes. Um, but, like, I remember one day, I was in there, buying the alcohol with my friend, who was also, like, pretty older, and we were doing this successfully. It was so successful. Then our dude, our friend comes in, who at the time was, like, five foot. He had an emo side fringe, which is nothing wrong with that, but it makes you look a little bit younger. And he goes in, and for some reason, what possessed him to say, I don't want the, this flavored cider, I would like the other one. And instantly, our money was handed back to us. <laughs> Almost instantly. And I remember my friend saying this exact thing. This is why it's relevant. He said, let's go back in when he forgets our face. And I remember saying, thank you to myself. Dude, that's not happening tonight. <laughs> He's not going to forget our face tonight. Uh, 9th of January, it says, Bra! First class cabin, number one. It looks like they're still investigating here. Yes, on that subject... I wonder if Inspector Hosunaga is unscathed. What do you mean, unscathed? And, like, I understand when Hosunaga, by the way, that he, like, definitely was working for the government and he had to do this for the government. That doesn't make his choices good. Everything, everyone has a choice, you know? It might not be a good choice, but it was a choice. And, like, still, regardless of, like, whether it was, uh, you know, planned by the government for what he did when he t misplaced evidence and took away evidence... The trial went on with the reason why the first trial was five hours long is because Hosanaga kept like going, Oh, I remember, I have that plate, dude. <laughs> dude, hey, I have that. Like, imagine an actual murder case and someone's like, We never found the bullet. And the, the, the cop is like, Wait, do you, do you mean like a bullet from like a Magnum? Uh, yeah, we, we mean that bullet. Dude, dude, I have that. <laughs> I hit that, you know? That's what it was like. That's all I got to say about that, really. Don't you remember what he said about allowing you out of the cabin to investigate? He was going to talk to the captain about it. He said he'd lay his life on the line for you. Oh, yes. But I'm sure he's exaggerating. Let's see what he has to say for himself. He might have some new information for us. You, you never know. So we have to move? Back to the... Oh, is he in here, maybe? Like, is he hiding? Because I, I want to double check just in case. Oh, he's there. Okay. Oh my god, he's all bruised up! Hosanaga san! Hosanaga, how are you doing, buddy?
I actually had a cut on my nose as well, but I hit it. Ah, oh, you're back, I Inspector. What happened to you? Your face is. Please don't worry about it. They're just scratches. Maybe by a bear, maybe. When I told the captain that I'd given you permission to investigate, he told me he pummeled me with his fists and then tossed me overboard. What? But the pummeling was over in a flash, and he must have decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing, really. He looks like he wasn't joking when he said he'd lay his life on the line if he had to. Well, thanks to your efforts, we now know a little bit about the neighboring cabin. Yes, so I understand. Oh! I bumped into a man claiming to be a great detective a little while ago. I promise, I think, I, sorry, I think his name was something like Herlock Jones? I don't think he was a German, though. Ah, uh, that explains it. Shall we compare notes, then? We can tell you what we found out. Yes, let's do it! Well, Sonaga's got a can-do attitude, and you know what I think about can-do attitudes? I love them. I love a good can-do attitude. cabin next door. Let's see what you found out about this dude. What? N Nikolina Pavlova? She's in the cabin next door? Oh, do you know who she is? Please! What self-respecting ballet fan wouldn't know that graceful angel? Oh, dude, are you still bleeding? You need to get that checked out, dude. Oops, I think I'm ups I've set him there. Well, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to the case, at least. Oh, how? Because angels don't go around committing crimes, do they? Hosanaga, you understand. You're starting to sound like a reasonable man. Hosanaga, no longer hiding evidence. He's getting beaten up so we can climb the fence into truth land. <coughs> Oops, now I definitely upset him. Inspector, has your investigation here pro uh, proved fruitful? If I'm honest, there's very little more I can do. Our duty is to make sure the scene is disturbed, ready to hand over to Hong Kong police. So I was going to pick up a few things and, like, you know, hide them until, like, halfway through the trial, but... So I'm just keeping watch here, trying not to take my eyes off the job. Oh, I see. Ah, there's one thing. I do have a small piece of new information for you. Yes, do tell us, Inspector, please. New information. Nice. What is the new information you have, Inspector? It's this. The medical uh, officer has been finished. His examination of the body. I managed to obtain the support. Oh, sick, dude. Thank you. Cosmos postmortem report. This is actually well, it's sick in a way, a cool way, but then also like sad because we have to look at Cosmos postmortem report. Cosmos sama. So, what was the cause of death? Damage to the cervical vertebrae is what's written in the report. His neck was broken? Yes, it would seem so. There was no obvious wounds or other signs of injury. So at first, I think they were considering poison. But it turns out they found no trace of poison in his system at all. So it wasn't a snake? Well, what weapon was used then? Nothing has been found as yet, but the fact that there are no signs of, of a wound. He sounds too much like Sherlock Holmes, I apologize. Suggests it may have been a blunt object. Something that wouldn't leave a mark. Oh, I see. All the body's nerves run through the spine to the brain. A struggle to him back to the brain. To, ne uh, to the neck could induce death. It's a possibility no obvious wound would be left. Poor Kazuma. I have a second copy of the report. If it might be useful, you're welcome to have it. Thank you. Really? Are you sure? Yes, it's fine. I've hid the second part of it. I trust you. Thank you. After all, if I didn't trust you, I'd never have agreed to you, you leaving the cabin in the first place, would I? Ah. The 
post-mortem report has been added, entered into the court record. A report from the SS Bra medical officer giving the cause of death as a cervical spine injury. There's no trace of external injury or poison. That is crazy. That sounds like a lot of pain as well. Sounds like a lot of pain. The great detective. He's great, isn't he? He's great. Oh, Mr. Jones is here, was he? Yes. He seemed to be enjoying himself a little too much as he crept up out the floor investigating. But then he suddenly left. I suppose he must have become bored. Did he say anything at all? Actually, now that you mention it, yes, just one thing. He, but he practically shouted it. It's shoe polish, was all he said. Shoe polish? I wonder what he meant. It was... It was when he was over there by the piece of- Oh, so it's shoe polish on the ground. Okay. Uh, perhaps he was talking about this brick-colored mark, do you think? Yes, that must be it. But how can Mr. Sholmes know that it's shoe polish? Hmm. That leaves me cold, I'm afraid. I have no idea. What is this, suzada -san? Well... Kazuma-san was wearing leather shoes with a very dark tan, you. Dark tan? Sort of dark brownish red, then. Yes, a little like the color of red wine, but darker. I often repaired them for him. Oh, does this mean... that this mark was made by the polish on Kazuma's shoes and is scuffed on the floor? The mark of the floor has been entered into the court record. Oh, look, he's standing behind us. Get him, Hosnaga! That's really all I can tell you at this age. That's fine. That's more than enough, dude. That's more than uh, more than enough. Thank you very much for your help. I should return to my post. My fellow crewman's eyes are boring into the back of my head. Yes, that might be different for the best. Thank you. Poor inspector, you look exhausted. Oh no, well. I feel terrible that I failed to protect Asugai-san. He was my responsibility. Of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You were his friends. I can totally understand having like being responsible for someone and then letting him down though. That feels pain that's painful. The truth is. Seem to have a heavy head ever since I woke this morning. A heavy head? My head's still throbbing too. I mean, we all have heavy heads. So I guess, like, now that we have that information, should we examine the shoe polish on the floor maybe one more time? Everything seems to be re-examinable, which is strange. This is really beautiful color, this glass. It looks like whatever is broken clean in two, but the other half is nowhere to be seen. And then there's this brick-colored mark, which is shoe polish, according to that great detective you seem to know all about. I suppose it must be from Kazuma Sama's shoes. Maybe, but what I'd like to know is, how can the detective be so sure that it's shoe polish and not something else? Because he's a great detective, of course. That's hardly a reason, is it? Is that all? Do we have to re-look at everything in the cabin, or can we leave? Because I feel like, you know, examining absolutely everything wouldn't make much sense. Maybe we can go back into the first cabin, uh, first class cabin hallway? We'll know if that gives us the new text, right? There we go. Okay. 9th of January, it says... First class cabin, passageway. Look, now to son. Seaman strong enough has gone. Strong enough? The pretty Russian sailor is always crossing his arms and glaring at us. Oh, all these Russian names are impossible to remember. Um, if, again, like, I don't know many Russian people. I only know, like, uh, Ukrainian, which I do not mean to compare, and I'm not, I hope that doesn't upset anyone. Uh, I only know that, like, uh, it was very sad that the, you know, at first when the Ukrainian kids told us that they changed their names to be more pronounceable for other people, for us. Uh, so, like, for example, there might be a kid named, uh, Daria Daria, or something like that. And they change the name to, like, Adasha, or something like that. And 
honestly, thank you, because there's some of the names are hard for me to pronounce. But it's also very cute because they also told me, like, hey, uh, we kind of liked it, you know, coming up with new names or coming up with nicknames or using our nicknames for our names. For example, like, uh, Sophia is a, is a nickname for uh, Sonia, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Tralala. Who's in who's doing a tralala? Did you hear that? It sounded like someone singing. I did the great detective. <laughs> what did the great detective? What did you do? This caroling. I know that lark like voice. Well, never mind that now. This is a golden opportunity for us. Yes, you're right. We must seize it. Let's go inside Miss Plovov's cabin while we, while we can and investigate. Definitely. Before that. Oh, sorry. I, I skipped out. It's strong enough, not stringy, not. Oh, so he got it wrong. He got it wrong. So I guess we can go back into the uh, Miss Pavlova's cabin. I don't feel too good about investing in her cabin without her permission. But we have to solve a murder of our very, very close friend. Some people also said that it was kind of like uh, too early to kill him, and I agree. Uh, but look, we're here now. But what's life without a bit of unpredictability? Miss Pavlova isn't back yet. Oh my god, <laughs> what are you doing? Those are our private things. There's not a moment to waste in our sound. We must investigate as quickly as we can. I suppose you're right, for Cosmo's sake. Not just for Cosmo, sama What do you mean? It can't be long until we arrive at port in Hong Kong. I don't want you to be in the handcuffs when we get there. Thank you, Suzato. Really? We must solve this case, naruto san by ourselves if we have to. Yes, we will. So we can examine this full cabin now, which is going to open up a lot of, like, new opportunities to us. Uh, let's start with, I guess, the, the, the basic stuff, like the tea. Ooh, it seems the teapot is empty. Hmm. So the natural conclusion is that the Russians are very thirsty people. Or, because Miss Pavlova only came to this cabin last night, she hasn't had a chance to make any tea yet? I mean, it could be either. It's definitely the ex the, they're excessively thirsty. I'd lay a thousand to one on it. I like that we're kind of dumb too. I like that we're kind of an idiot also. You're rather obstinate, aren't you, Naruto-san? Check out this as well. The case is probably going to be the most important thing. There are just a few books on the desk, nothing else but the looks of it. Well, Miss Pavlova's only ran away from the ballet last night. She's hardly occupied this cabin for any time at all. That's true. I wonder what kind of books she likes to read. Good books. <laughs> hmm, let me see. Yes, I see. It was seen that Miss Pavlova was enjoying reading. Books written in Russian. Thanks. I think I probably already knew that. It's rude to ask uh, too much of people, Naruto san. Can't you remember that? Okay, Jesus. I guess we can check out this now because this might be the most important thing. Miss Pavlova's cave is, is open. It's completely empty inside, but according to the great detectives, Great deduction. She was hiding her special friend in there. Yes, a friend that she had to keep secret. Because you're not allowed to bring animals on bo aboard the SS. Bruh! I wonder what kind of animals she had in there. And more to the point. Where is it now? Uh, well, there's like a little bowl here for maybe animals. To, then it's not a snake? I've investigated 30, but I can't find anything out of place. What about this right here? I wonder what this little saucer is doing on the floor. Usually for a pet, right? It doesn't look like it's been dropped, more like it was put there deliberately. Ah, do you think? Do you think there could be a leak in the roof just above here? What, a leak? Is the ship quite safe? I'm sure that even there's a little leak in the roof. It doesn't matter. I mean, the whole ship is going to sink. No, no, you're right. Of course you're right. She's really trying to persuade herself, isn't she? The bookshelf as well, I suppose. All the books have toppled over together. Look, every single one. Do you think that's uh, a god of the sea, perhaps? He's toppled too, though. He's exactly the same bookcase uh, next door. In Cosmo's cabin? Perhaps. Perhaps Miss Pavlova was practicing a difficult ballet and posed uh, and fell against the bookcase. I don't know. Would she really be practicing ballet on the same night as uh, she ran away from the ballet company? 
All right then. It must have been you. You lost your temper and knocked them all over in a fit of rage. Not everything bad that happens on the ship is because of me, you know. Maybe it is. It might be. Well, anyway, I'll set them straight again in here too. I don't like seeing things this way. I don't know. I feel like we should be like, this is just probably like not something we should do just in case. I don't know. But look, whatever. Look, it's, it's done now. Ah, uh, yes. They're displayed in the ca this cabin too. Look, the SS Burroughs Rule of Passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. I suppose Miss Pavlova's realized that she needed to keep the contents of her case a secret after uh, she read this. Her special friend, I mean... I wonder where her friend has disappeared to now. It's probably having fun exploring the ship, I imagine. I just hope Seaman Stroganoff doesn't find it and throw it overboard. Oh yes, so do I. So we can move to the side here as well. Again, even investigating this game, I'm just going to say this right now. To me, the investigations in this game are, like, miles better than the Ace Attorney games. Even though the Ace Attorney games have fun uh, um, investigations. But for some reason, they, these guys, like, are, they're very bouncy. It feels like you don't linger too much on the stuff that doesn't matter too much. I think it, it just works really well. Uh, Naruto-san, are you there? Sorry? I'm right here. Yes. Why? Oh, good. I thought you might have climbed into the wardrobe when I wasn't looking. There's no place like home. Believe me, I don't have some strange compulsion to jump inside every wardrobe I see, you know. Well, anyway, I'm not sure anyone could fit inside this one. It's full of beautiful outfits. I suppose they're all st uh, stage costumes. I was sort of hoping we might miss Pavlova's uh, friend hiding in there, but no such luck. Is there anything else we can look at here? There's this, this little banner, I suppose? There's one of these next to the bed in Cosmo's cabin, too. Yes, it's a bell cord. I can't resist. Pull it! She barely hesitated there, and she gave it a good tug, too. No, I didn't actually expect anyone to come. We don't want them to. We're trying to investigate in secret. I mean, she is a teenager. She is a teenage girl, so I, like, yeah, I would have done that as an adult, like I said. This cabin door has the same, uh, has the same simple sort of bolted latch that our cabin door has. If the bolt's drawn across, there's no way anyone could enter the cabin from outside. Yes, it's not a particularly heavy-duty bolt, is it? But still, it wouldn't slide across of its own accord, would it? No, and the door is made of metal, so there's no chance of trickery using magnets on bolts from the outside. And it seals up perfectly, too, to stop any seawater coming in. So you couldn't use the method you told me of passing thread through a crack around the closed door, either. I seem to know a lot of tricks for opening doors. I'm starting to see why they suspect me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, this, maybe? What else do we have to investigate? Oh, this! Yes, of course. Of course. Jesus, it's probably the most important thing in this room at this stage. So this ventilator connects to Cosmos' cabin next door. Yes, although what a fool of a ship builder must be to open a ventilator in another room. Ah, uh, maybe. It's sort of like the gas leak next door. The occupant of this cabin would notice or raise the alarm. Or the occupants of both cabins would die of gas poisoning. That is a possibility. Anyway, last night Cosmo Rusan wrote that he saw a speckled band coming out of his ventilator. So, is there anything else we need to investigate? Is there anything else? This bag, maybe? Uh, this, this, uh, the photo, this. Is there something over here? Like, oh, this bin! I suppose every cabin has a waste paper basket. Shall we have a little look and see what's been thrown it away? No, the sun. You let him read the diary. Don't do this to me, Susaru. Susaru, don't start this, though, okay? It's poor naked to go trifling through someone's rubbish, you know. I agree, but, you know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of invasions of privacy. Besides, she's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish now. However, these are special circumstances, I think. Exactly, we have no choice. There's hardly anything in her at all. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. Is there anything else we can investigate? Like these hooks, the thing up here? What else do we have to investigate here? We got the T. Can we go back? But like, I feel like we would like, there would be a change in story though, right? If something big happened. Like if something changed, like the, the story would change a little bit. Maybe not. Are we missing something? Are we missing something? Hmm. 
we might be missing like there might be just something I'm just not seeing like this bag is over here but it's not giving us any indication that we can even look at it uh, we looked at the rules we looked uh, we, we didn't look at the painting because it wouldn't really let us look at the painting what if we just go home maybe that's just it maybe look let's go back to the first let's go back here for a second No, uh, we legit need to find something here. And maybe I'm being very foolish about this. I could be being, being very foolish about this that I can't find what we're looking for. Okay, so let's just go from right to left. So the bed, wait, we did the bed apparently. Did we? Oh, okay. I love that she said, hey, I thought you might have gone back in the closet, you know? Okay. The door. Nothing on the floor here. This here. Nothing in this basket. Nothing on the ground. Am I just not seeing something as thoroughly as other people might see? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm kind of uh, a bit confused. We could look at this again, maybe. You know, it's the same dialogue as before. It's the same dialogue as before. Um. No, uh, should we move out of here? Like, I, I don't, I feel like I'm wasting time here. I'm, I'm not doing it on purpose. Like, it doesn't benefit me at all to waste any time. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna try and move uh, maybe to Cosmos Cabin, maybe. And maybe go back to investigating this part of the, the, the ventilator again. That's the only thing I can think of. That's right. And just few for before Cosmo died, we saw some emerging from it, the Speckled Band. If only Miss Pablo had been able to shed some light on it, but it seemed like ba as baffled as we are. Yes, I wonder if she's telling us everything, though. I'm not sure. I know those people aboard would say the same about me, but there's something about that woman that didn't sit right with me. So do we have to, like, investigate yeah, everything? Do we have to investigate everything again? This is where Cosmo sends Fimo's writing his diary. Looking uh, at his writing on this passage, it's almost impossible to believe he's gone. Cosmosan left us a vulnerable clue in these words, I'm sure of it. We have to solve this mystery, Nadoro-san. We will. All the books provide for passenger occupying this cabin nearly ranges on the shelf. They were all over the place when they first looked around, if you remember. Oh yes, and I uh, tidied them up uh, then, didn't you? Yeah. You have to look after ship's property. I'm really behaving in the cabin's least of damage. But it really wasn't me who knocked them over. Well, anyway, I feel much better now that they're neatly lined up so I can relax when things are untidy. No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I, I wonder if we look. Look, I think what we might do is wait until the next episode. We might be able to figure something out in between then. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to have to do here. I might just, like, investigate every single thing here and see if it changes anything. No, it's clear these letters were written in the ink that was somewhat spilled on the floor. And they spelled the Russian word for wardrobe. It does seem to be an unambiguous pointer to you, Naruto-san, as you were the sleeper in there. But to be truly ambiguous, it should have spelt out my name, don't you think? Well, either way, one fact remains. It's hard to imagine that Cosmo sama would have uh, written his last words a word in Russian. Which begs the question, who did write it? 
Who didn't write it is probably the question. Probably a better question is who didn't write it. I feel like I've investigated every part of this place again. Maybe apart from this. Um, you. Uh, oh, sorry. I just went to next door. Why? Who gave permission for this? Um, well, Inspector, I mean, Seaman Hosunaga did. Hmm. The new Japanese, was it? Later, I will roll them in a ball and throw them in cold room. Okay. Phew. I hope Inspector Hosunaga doesn't find us having too much trouble in our cab. We're gonna get the, him beaten up 25 times. He's really gone out of ways to help us, hasn't he? When we go back to Japan, we'll take him for a steak at, like, Carnival. That could be a very long time for now, Roto san. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Bura. Passengers must not keep uh, weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Yeah, we know this as well. We know this as well. I feel like I've I've like examined like everything again. Like I I I might be just dumb here. I might be just big big dumb Calvin. Uh, go in here for a second. Is there anything we have to investigate here that we haven't investigated yet? We've investigated everything here. Apart from the doorway. This could be our chance. What? To barely... Okay. We could investigate. I'm not sure if we can go that far, but we could certainly go look around more if we want to learn something. I don't know. What? Am I, I'm, I know I'm missing something probably pretty obvious. Oh, he's, is this progression? It's just, he's just here? Mr. Shulman's look. Wow, you never know where he's going to turn up next, do you? He seems to be stealing a look at something as he uh, sings to himself. Tra -la -dee -la -dee -la -lay, I did the greatest detective way. He's still singing. Do you think he hasn't noticed us? Or he's simply in extremely high spirits? Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew when the hour was a bit more than I could, ch I could chew. And through it all, when there was no doubt, it's lucky her luck was about. Um, excuse me. I solved it all and stood tall. I did it the great detective way. Mr. Sholmes. Ah! <laughs> She's ready to fight? <laughs> fight me, dude. Oh my god, please fight me. I thought you were never going to stop, so I figured now is a good time as any. I very nearly dropped you to the floor with one of my famous right hooks. Dude, the animation, you look at this. He's in the club. Alright, I get the picture. Mr. Sholmes, you seem to be examining something before we interrupted you. Ah, oh, yes, that. I was immersed in study of the ship's log as permitted by a stockly built crewman who's usually on guard here. And did you find anything useful from it? Well, after 2 a.m. this morning, the majority of entries are blank. Which means that there is nothing to report and nothing of note that happened. <laughs> you truly are a student from the land of the rising sun. You've been utterly blinded by it. <laughs> Sorry? Your logic, my boy, is inverted. Whatever you mean, Mr. Sholmes. Observe the other pages and all shall become clear. It would seem the same crewman of off stands sentry in the first class uh, passageway. And he has almost a religious practice of a court nothing to report every half hour. Oh. He writes that in every 30 minutes? Nothing to report. Precisely. Put simply, the seaman writes nothing to report when there's just that. And yet, the ship's log from last night is largely blank. He didn't even write nothing to report. Do you mean... Yes, there were circumstances afoot last night which led to the seaman being absent from his post. What kind of circumstances? What happened? That remains a mystery for now, but we can be sure of something significant took place. So significant that it caused the seaman to forget his regular habit of scribbling nothing to report in the log. These are important details. I would uh, stake my life on it. You must log the ship's log in your mental file. The ship's log has been uh, entered into the court record. 
Now that deduction was worthy of a great detective. Ah, you're standing to starting to understand what my way is, I see. What makes Sholmes Sholmes brilliance? <laughs> oh, ouch! What is it? Are you hurt? Oh, uh, don't worry yourself. I seem to be afflicted with the throbbing head this morning for some reason. Nothing more. A headache again? Well, my friends, on to the next encounter. He's still singing to himself. I can hear as he wanders on the passageway. This dude is on something. It's something wrong, Cesar son. You seem lost in thought. It's just. Well, I feel the same. Sorry? Ever since I woke this morning, I've had something of a headache. A sort of continuous throbbing. Oh, you too? Yeah, we said we had it as well. So I wonder now will things change if we move to the cabin? Because I'm thinking that, like, there's something has to, like. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Whoa. Oh my god, big sirens. Shut down engines immediately. Vessel sighted at a quarter mile four. Full stop, hard to starboard. All hands brace for impact. What the? I think we're about to crash into another ship. What? I I can't stand. Susan, hold on to me. Oh my god, a big wag. Sasan, you alright? Are you injured at all? I think I'm fine. Thank you, Naruto san. It looks like we avoided the collision. Okay, that's great. That is great. Man, imagine we had to do the trial on a stranded island. That would be freaking insane. Ace Attorney game idea. We're all on an island, right? Okay, listen. We're all on an island, and everyone starts freaking dying, okay? Everyone starts dying, and, like, the like there's, like, this bear who, like, is like, I'm a bear! And he, like, is trying to get us all to kill each other. It'd be so freaking cool. Did you make that game? I think, yes, the ship has come to a stop. Oh, my goodness. What about you, Naruto san Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. I like that she shows a bit of concern as well, like, you know, because I feel like sometimes, uh, we, you know, they have little spats between them, like, in the arguments, but, like, like, they're both human just trying to, like, get through this. Hello, is anyone there? Shout if you need assistance. Oh, that sounds like, oh, it's Big Boy, is it? Inspector, oh, Inspector Hosanaga, okay. If you're in there, Naruto san unbolt the door quickly. What? The bolt? Look at that. The door is bolted. Did you do that, Sisada san? No, I didn't touch it. Well, that's strange. How did. And look at all the books. They're just like they were before again. Naruto san, are you going to open the door and let inspection? Wait a second. The door unbolted when we had like a little bit of a, a crazy collision or something. And then re bolted. In the morning! Because we had a conclusion, I mean. Yeah, that's what happened. I better tidy up this place first. Our violent emergency stop had solved one mystery, at least, in a very vivid way. But I knew that what wait, wait is on the other side of the cabin door would not be pleasant. I hurried up around tidying up the cabin with a new sense of foreboding in my heart. Oh, that's not good, is it? To be continued? Another to be continued? Whoa! This investigation is long, but it's very fun. It's very, very fun. Save your current progress. I think this is actually like a perfect place to end this episode. I didn't end the episode because I wanted to figure out what we were doing. Uh, GAA Gaelic Athletic Association? The Gay? The Gay? 9th of January. SS Bura! Miss Pavlova's cabin. So we're still in here? Somehow, the doors of the cabin we were ended up in bolted after we made an emergency stop. Suzada-san took a deep breath and gently said, uh, slid back the bolt. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think it re-bolted itself. Oh, they found out about Miss Pavlova. You, what are you doing, Miss Pavlova? Oh, he knew about it already. Miss Pavlova's quarters. Ah, you both looking hurt. Good. Yes, we're fine. Thank you. What on earth happened? We heard something about that we are going to collide with another ship. Yes, it appears to have been a false report, though. Oh, how did that happen? 
There's a dense fog outside, so it's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought the sh uh, he saw a ship ahead. The person obviously triggered the alarm, and that's why we made an emergency stop. Everything is chaos. Passengers are screaming. Crew are running everywhere. The first class carry is not really quite part of the ship at this moment. Oh, I see. Someone triggered the alarm? Does that mean that someone presented the press, uh, pressed the button outside? You wicked intruder! Just on in black, you are the devil! Sorry, me? There's something so strong about, like, a lady calling you the devil. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, like, such a classic, like, 50s movie thing, you know? You say of the devil! <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, it's kind of funny. You opened my traveling case. How could you? Oh, she didn't open it, so someone else must open it then. What? No, we didn't touch it. That's right, Miss Pavlova. It was already open when we came into your cabin. Inspector. Mm, yes. Arrest this man. I know he did it. He is a criminal. It is not that he has killed a man. Ah, he's a stowaway as well. If Vixen promises not steal chicken, do you believe? Ah. Uh. Take him away. He's a trespass as well as everything else. I think she's trying to protect herself here, and like you know, this is like uh like her way of doing it. Stolen away, trespass, and killing. She's right. You are the devil. I'm not the devil. I am the devil. It doesn't look good, does it? There's a cell below deck. Throw him in. Oh, we're actually going into a prison? We're actually going into a cell? Tomorrow we dock in Hong Kong. Oh, cool. Then we give you straight to the police. Wait, a cell? Please, Inspector Osnaga, there's nothing you can do. This is a Russian vessel. I really have no jurisdiction here. After my last effort to appeal the captain's good nature, I think I'm out of options. Yeah, there, was, there was no good nature then? This is terrible. This is a real crisis. I've got to find a solution. Immediately. Oh. Well, okay, we're on the episode here, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye. Do we have to, like, examine each character now? Is that what we have to do? I know I said I'd end this episode twice, but I kind of, like, had this, like, I don't know, I kind of see what's gonna happen. Get out! Listen, I'm sorry that we stuck in here without your permission, but... Get out now! We just, we just need to investigate here to help understand the... Oh, wow, she's saying something in, in Russian. It's no use, she's not going to listen. I need to find someone who will. He's not, he... Hosanaga's probably the only one gonna listen, but, like, we should talk to Big Boy as well. Please, just give me a little more time. I do nothing for you, except show you the way to ship's prison cell. Ugh, thanks, but no thanks. But I'm innocent! I didn't kill anyone! And trespassing? And stowing away? Well, um, you know, sometimes life can lead you down some unusual avenues and well... Enough! You are guilty! Ship cell is the only place fit for you. Come on, there has to be someone. Some savior to rescue me from this crisis. It's Hosanaga, right? It, is it Hosanaga or is it is it gonna be, uh, suzado -san? You've got yourself into a difficult situation here. By entering this cabin uninvited, I mean. Sorry. I was just so desperate to find a clue. My friend, there's really nothing more I can do to help you. If I push my luck any further, a punch to the face will be the least of my worries. I'm really sorry. I have to take responsibility for giving you the freedom to investigate Miss Pelova's cabin. Now this happened. I'll have to report to the captain at once. I really need some help here. I need to save it to rescue me for this crisis. Is that? Is he in this room? He is! <laughs> He's hanging from the walls! What the? What are you doing up there? Oh, he's wearing the tiara! You look lovely! Naturally, I was analyzing what a weight of 20,000 rubles would feel like on one's head. That's a good thing to analyze. I've already told you that as a detective, it is my business to know what other people do uh, not. Huh. This isn't mere tomfoolery, my boy. Oh, no, no, no. Well, why are you hanging from the hook then, before then? Isn't it obvious to properly assess the weight of the 20,000 rubles? Naturally. I wish to determine they would be bent to the conceited looking hook on the wall, so full of a brag and bounce. 
I never uh, know whether to take this man seriously or not. Yeah, we should. Look, he's going to save our life right now. This is so funny. This is really good. You again, the great detective. Ah, uh, Inspector, I confess I've been looking for you. I have something to report to you, Master Urgently. Well, you might try looking for me somewhere other than the hook on the wall next time. Well, maybe you shouldn't look like you're a person that hangs around on hooks then, Osanaga. What is the report? Speak. An urgent report from the great detective can mean but one thing. Yes! The case of the curious murder that took place last night. Here on this vessel, the steamship... Bura! Has been solved. By me, naturally. Wait, what? Wait, what? Huh? Buddy? Huh? What? Really? Yes. I have eliminated all other possibilities. No other explanations exist. So allow me to illuminate all your minds. But I'm about to reveal my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to this case! Oh, we're doing another deduction? Huh, you have solved it? Even Hedgedog understands this case. We all knew he was responsible for killing Student Boy this morning when we found a criminal in a wardrobe. I think what happened is, I think that the move maneuvering of the ship uh, a little bit locked the door again, so someone that was able to get out of the, sh the, the room. I didn't do it! The trouble is, there doesn't appear to be anyone else who could have killed the victim. Because as everyone knows, the cabin door was bolted shut from the inside. I don't think so. I don't think so, buddy. You are wrong. That means the culprit must be someone inside the cabin. Yes, it was called a locked room mystery in detective stories. Bah, locked room, that is point. The room was locked. Well, I can't deny that. I can. I can deny it. There's no way the bolt could have been drawn across from outside the cabin. You're all quite mistaken. The cabin next door is not so called locked room at all. What? He's about to open this case wide open. Oh yes, there was another entrance. The entrance used last night by the culprit in order to gain access to the cabin despite the bolted door. What other entrance? We never discovered one. Why it gapes open mouth at oh sorry, why it gapes open mouth at you ways and even as we speak. The ventilator man The ventilator <laughs> You think this is funny? I can even put my arm through the hole. That's because your arms are as thick as tree trunks. You're suggesting the culprit entered and left the victim's cabin through a tiny opening. It's not possible. <laughs> but it is. And last night, the victim even witnessed the intruder in the act of passing through the ventilator. The snake. Mr. Sholmes, you mean... Are you referring to the wound the words Cosmos son wrote in his diary? 1 train train a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. He's about to open this wide open. 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Precisely, my dear madam. But what does it mean? What is a speckled band? The answer to that particular conundrum is in this very cabin. Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? There's a distinct element of danger, but fear not, I'm ready. What I'm about to expose for you all to see, you to your core, will shock you to your cores. Behold! Yeah, what the? Really cool animation. H to snake. Oh, and he wrapped himself right around this boy? Yeah, we knew it was a snake. Allow me to introduce you all to the band. The Speckled Band. A snake? Indubitably. He's great. He's a great character. Really fun. Um, just to show you just one thing. Pray what troubles you. Well, that snake. Isn't it really, it isn't really speckled, is it? It looks more stripy, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, I thought too. I thought it would be kind of like yellow with speckles on it. Hmm. Yes, you're right. I think in this case you'd have to call it... 
the striped band, wouldn't you? <laughs> you both see and observe with distinction, however. Do you not think that this is precisely the trap into which the culprit wishes you to fall? I'm not so sure. <laughs> I'm not so sure. Goodness, really, it's it's a trap? How exactly? I think perhaps it's time I explain the intricacies of my strain of thought. Are you ready, Miss Pavlova? I'm sorry for the young man who died, but that is all. His death has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. There are two conclusions I have drawn from the facts. Number one! Last night, your friend infiltrated the victim's cabin. Ah. And number two. That same friend was responsible for the victim losing his life. No. She's turned white as a bowl of rice again. White as a bowl of rice again. Sean's must be right. He's hit the nail on the head. This young woman's friend killed Mr. Asagai. Looks like he can't speak with that snake coiled around his head. I would advise as little movement as possible, semen. You wouldn't want a fangs of a long friend. You're like, it's so funny because like this reminds saying semen just reminds me of like the other day in, in like science. Uh, like we were observing people's like exam results and like they had to label the sperm duct and someone wrote uh, the ball, the ball rope. And like, <laughs> and like, I remember I was like, no, that's the sperm duct. And then like, two of the girls in the back were like, Mr. Delaney just said sperm. And I'm like, yes, we are in the science room. <laughs> it's okay. We're allowed to say this in the science room. So everyone, let us begin. Herlock shows his power to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. So we have another logic and reasoning spectacular. I think this is going to go fantastic. The great deduction. The game is afoot. These are actually really good. Intruder's identity. Conclusion, snake. Miss Pavlova, moments ago you claimed the following. That his death has nothing to do with me. The whole thing has nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. She's 15, dude. Yes, when you recall those horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. And it's that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. So we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin that pertentious night? Why, naturally, it was the friend in which you boarded this vessel, was it not? As I suspected, another telltale glance. Without a doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. And yet, the fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's written observations on the night in question tell us of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably, this specimen markings do not fit that description in any way. What explanation can we give then, pray? What was this sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me. This has nothing to do with any of this. Oh, but it does! You have the answers to this quandary even now, hidden behind your back. I, I, think, I just think this is a really, really fun mechanic. The deduction stuff. That which you're trying but failing to seal it shed its skin? Ugh! The snake sloughed skin. Evidently, after this subtle and horrible crime, this most deadly fiend of a friend of yours shed its original skin. No? I don't know what you are talking about. That would kind of make sense why it's no longer speckled. Last night, through the ventilator visible in this cabin, you then speckled friends slid the next door. 
Using the bell cord on the other side of the bridge as the bridge, the serpent silently descended into the victim's quarters. In the dim light, it appeared to the young gentleman who was about to lose his life as a speckled band. Does a snake shed its skin and change its uh, its its shape on like its its texture altogether, or like or, or its visuals altogether? In summary, the nature of this uh, friend is yours, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime. It's a rare breed of snake whose make markings change each time it sloughs its skin. A snake so dreadful we can only imagine it would be found in the deepest depths of India. I really like this guy. I think it's really funny. As beloved speckled snake. What else do we have to discuss here? What's this? What's the next topic? How Mr. Asagai died from a snake bite? But we didn't see any visible snake bites, did we? Moving on to the heart of the matter, the grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life? And why? He's so cute. So cute he is. According to the data which I have apprised, it would appear that there's no visible signs of injury. Ah. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained in it by terrible venom. Now, if you check that as fact, We can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm it at the scene of the crime. And what could there be? Yes, an examination of deceased's body will prove the cause of death ex conclusively. The almost but not quite imperceptible puncture wounds left by the venomous fangs will seal the truth. Did, is there fangs? Yes, the vestige of the snakes delivered by your terrifying fiend. This, this makes no sense. Was there snake bites? There's no point in fainting against Miss Pavlova. After the incident, you endeavored to hide everything, didn't you? But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right, you hid the evidence of links you to the victim set in that traveling case. When we first met in this cabin, it came to my attention that you moved periodically. Your servant assassin was restless inside, no doubt. You! You don't! I oh, thought, so you! You don't! It's telling me the victim made note of a low whistling sound that he heard minutes before his end. That was your signal, was it not? The sound you had used to train your servant to feel- Oh, really? That's- that's- Oh, really? That's really crazy, I don't know. That's really crazy. To train? Still love this investigation so far. Indeed, you put the serpent through this ventilator and wait after a period you'd summon it back with a whistle. You couldn't know if the animal had done its duty, so you would listen for the signs of ne life next door. If victim appeared not to have been dispatched, you would release the snake once more. You would deny the snake has undergone such training? It's not true. Having slid into the ventilator and down the bell cord, the creature needed only to sink its fangs into once, in once. And its venom would course through the victim's veins, ending his existence forever. That is the true nature of the speckled bird that took this poor man's young life. So that's what we can say. It's, it's like, no doubt. My logic is infallible. I don't know if it's going to be completely infallible because we're going to have to fix it, aren't we? This conclusion was a great introduction of the speckled band. Thus does conclude it. <laughs> I love that he's a detective and he's like, yeah, dude, I don't know about this. <laughs> or maybe he's impressed. We might actually find out if he's impressed or not. 